everyone. Good to see you guys. Awesome. Okay, while we wait for everyone to sign on, I will start to talk you through the materials I've got today. So pretty similar to previous weeks. Um, most important things today will be our pencil, our rubber, and our sharpener. I often say that I try not to use a rubber, but we're gonna actually draw a bit with a rubber today. So if you've got one, that would be ideal. Then I've got a few flowers, uh, tulips and some ones we found on a walk yesterday. And I've also got colored pencils. So totally optional to have colored pencils today, but we're gonna start our warm up exercise in color. If you want to do it in graphite pencil, that's totally fine. But if you've got color, we'll start our warm up in color. So I'll just wait a few minutes for everyone else to log on and then we'll get going. Brilliant. Okay, just one last time I'll run through my materials and then we'll begin. So I've got pencil, rubber and sharpener today. Um, I've also got paper, colored pencils and I've got some flowers. If you don't have flowers, you could use a plant. If you don't have a plant, you could use a floral pattern. But ideally you'd have flowers today, but I know that that's tricky um, for lots of us. So the idea is that you've just got something that's interesting to draw, that's living, ideally, floral or a plant. I've even got some of these little, uh, little guys who have fallen off, but I think those are quite beautiful to draw as well. Okay, let's get going. So we're gonna start up with our warm up activity. I'm gonna start with a colored pencil. Um, I'll use an orange for this. Um, so I just make sure that it's sharp. Everyone make sure that it's sharp. And like we've done in previous classes, we're gonna start with a blind contour, but again, there's a slight variation on our blind contour today. So, for those of you that haven't heard of a blind contour, I will explain. But those of you that have heard of it, the idea with our blind contour today is that we're gonna work our way across the page. So you're gonna start with drawing your flower or your plant in one corner, and then you're gonna try and repeat the shape over and over and over again across your page, almost like this continuous traveling line. For those of you that haven't heard of a blind contour, a blind contour is a drawing where you keep your eyes on your object instead of on your drawing. So the idea is that you will just look at your flower or your plant, and once your pencil is on the paper, until I say stop, you won't look at your drawing. So that's the idea is that you're challenging yourself to just look and draw by matching your hand to your eye, but not checking that everything looks okay. So we'll just do a quick one to start. So we're gonna start with one minute um, warm up one. So you probably won't get that many repetitions done in a minute, but just see what you do do in a minute. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm just starting with one of these little ones that's fallen off, my bunch of flowers. I'm gonna look at it like that. I'm gonna put my pencil to my paper and then I'm gonna start, okay? So I'm traveling across the flower with my eye and I'm gonna weave my eye around the flower, around the petals. It's got a bit of a stem bit. And then back up to the next petal. So as my eyes travel around this flower, I'm matching my eyes to my hand. Now the idea is that you will do that quite quickly and then you're gonna repeat the shape again right next to it without looking. So don't worry if you're being quite slow with this and you're still on the first like petal or whatever, that's okay. But we will speed up with these warm up exercises. Okay, nine seconds left. And stop. Okay, so this is what I did in a minute. Hopefully, if you didn't understand that first time, this will make a bit more sense now. So the idea is that you have, you've got this continuous line and I've repeated my flower shape a few times that I could fit in that, in that minute. Obviously, I didn't get loads done in a minute. 
but the next time we're going to have two minutes so you'll probably get lots of repetitions in or if you're using a bunch of flowers you could move from flower to flower to flower different ones and not just repeat it but as you can see the idea is that we're going to start bringing a bit more movement into our drawing so if you can move across the page with your pencil that's the idea okay so I'm going to use a different colour and do it on the same page just because um, I think they'll look quite nice together. I'm going to pick my little, my little bunch like this now, so I'm drawing a few more. You're going to have two minutes for this one, so I would suggest starting on the same side. I'm starting on my left side of my paper and I'm going to weave away the way across to my right side of my paper in two minutes. Okay, so two minutes starting now. For those of you that have just joined us, we're going to put our pencil to our paper and we are not going to look back at our paper for the rest of these two minutes. Now we're matching our eye to our hand, so my eye is weaving around my plant or my flower, whatever you've got today. And the idea is that you're moving quite quickly, but you're also trying to be as accurate as possible as you can be in this quick warm up. If you've just got one flower, you're going to repeat it again and again and again and try and weave across your page. And for those that just joined and they're a bit confused, we're doing a blind contour if you've been in my classes before, but this time we're traveling across the page. So we're trying to get a lot of movement in our blind contours today. We're trying to get used to using the space that we have and not just drawing tight little drawings. Okay, you've got one minute left. So if you've finished your flower, I would suggest repeating the flower shape right next to it without lifting your pencil off the paper. Okay, you've got 30 seconds left. Twenty-five seconds left. Just gonna see who's joined, if anyone's got any questions. Awesome to see so many of you joining in today. Thanks for coming, guys. Okay, ten seconds left. Ten seconds left. Okay, five seconds left. and stop. Okay, you're gonna see now, I've got my, um, the purple line was my second drawing, so the orange line was my first one and the purple line was my second one. Now, I think these are really um, beautiful, delicate drawings, but they've got a lot more interest because we're trying to travel across the page with them. So the first time I just used one flower and I repeated it again and again. The second time I used this little, little bunch of flowers and I actually tried to just pick different shapes of the flowers and moved across the page with it. So as you can see, these are actually all joined together, but I just made a creative choice to try and move with my pencil as I did it. So if you're a bit confused, hopefully third time round, you will get it. Um, this time we're gonna do three minutes. As you can see with my two minute one, I made the whole way across my page. So what I need to do for my three minute one is I'm gonna be a bit slower and I'm gonna really try and get in some of those details, but challenge myself to move the whole way across, okay? So part of the challenge of this warm up exercise is actually learning the speed with which you draw, and then also getting as much detail, getting quality and quantity in the timing. Okay, so I'm gonna pick a different color again. I'm really liking how these colors are working together. I think I'm gonna go with a blue. So I've got a blue like this. If you're doing it in pencil, graphite pencil, that's fine. Whatever you're using, just make sure it's sharp. It's really easy for us to draw with blunt pencils and not to notice. Okay, three minutes. Start on the left side, I would, if you're right-handed. Start on the right-hand side if you're left-handed. And we're gonna try and travel with that continuous line. Three minutes is starting now. Off you go. Okay, so I'm fixing my eyes on my flowers. And I'm weaving slowly around those petals with my eye. 
If you get confused and you're not sure where you actually are on your flower, I would encourage you just try not to look down at your drawing. Just make a decision, okay, I'm just gonna pretend I'm there and I'm gonna continue, okay? And you're gonna have to make some creative kind of leaps because your flowers aren't all in a line scattered across your page. They'll probably be bunched in a vase like mine are, but you want to place them side by side in your imagination so that you can weave all the way across your page. Now, I did just cheat there, I did just look down. Okay. So really focusing on where this petal goes in, where it goes out. I'm trying not to get lazy with just assuming I know what a flower looks like, but I'm really carefully looking. got to that one and I've got to the side of my bunch of flowers so I'm having to imagine that another flower is next to it. I've just gone off the bottom of my page, not panicking about it, moving up a little bit. We've got one and a half minutes left so if like me you're almost at the side of your page, slow down. Try and draw really really slowly for this last minute, getting as many of those details of your flowers you can. For those of you that are new to my classes, um, thanks so much for giving this a go. Hopefully you will enjoy it. The idea with these, um, you've got 50 seconds left, the idea with these Barely Drawing live classes is just that you would feel more equipped to be creative in your home. Um, I really wanted to have um, an opportunity to still teach in lockdown. Normally I teach these classes live and just have groups of about eight to ten people. But this means that in an hour hopefully you're learning a few little tips and tricks that you could draw in your own time. Um, you could just take one of these techniques and apply it to maybe some objects in your house or maybe an interior space. You could try these um, blind contour drawings. Okay, ten seconds left. And you're about to stop. Three, two, one. Stop. Have a look down at your drawing. See how, what you think of it. I'll show you mine in a moment. Okay, so this is my third one. Is the blue one. You might be able to see the difference between the purple and the blue. The blue one over here. So I've got a lot more detail than I did with my purple one. Interestingly, my second drawing, because it was just two minutes, so it was a bit less time, there's a bit more freedom in the movement. Um, it feels a lot looser, whereas because I was taking much more time over these flowers, it feels quite tight, the drawing. So you might be able to see the difference between the quality of your line. Have a look at your three different warm-up drawings, if you were with us from the beginning, and think, which one do you like the most? Do you like when it's really tight and detailed? Do you like where actually it doesn't quite match up and it's feeling quite fluid? There's no right or wrong, just totally a preference. Okay, now for me, I'm gonna put my colored pencils aside for the day and I'm just gonna work with graphite from here on in. If you love working in color, you can totally work in color, but we're gonna be looking at tone today. Um, we'll start with the linear drawing and then we'll move on to tone. So I'm just gonna use my graphite pencil. So our first artist inspiration today is a guy called Thomas Stoddard. This is a very, very simple line drawing. It's almost like a botanical illustration or um, biological illustration. Often art and biology were overlapped. Um, even science is an art. If you think about Da Vinci, he was a scientist and also an artist. And so often these kind of drawings are, are really looking at trying to get accuracy but there's a beautiful simplicity to the lines, okay? So there's no tone in this, there's no shading, it is just line, but it's really detailed, okay? I'm hoping you can see that in some, some amount of clarity, but sorry if it's not super clear. He's called Thomas Stoddard, and I found that image through the Tate website. Okay, we are gonna do our first 
line drawing where we look at our drawing at the same time. So you're going to have seven minutes to do a drawing similar to that Stoddard drawing that I just showed you. Now you can make some choices here. You might decide to just focus on one flower head. You might decide you're going to try and get all the bunch in in that time. Seven minutes is a lot longer than our three minutes but you'll still have to move if you're doing the whole bunch with a certain um, level of speed. Now I've actually, in my notes when I was planning this session, I've called this a portrait of a flower. I want you to think of this almost like you're paying so much attention to your bunch of flowers or your flower that it's, it's like a portrait of that flower. Imagine the same amount of care that you gave when you did portraits last week to getting the eyes in the right place, the nose in the right place, the mouth in the right place. In the same way, I want you to think, if you don't get things in the right place, you won't capture the likeness of this flower. Now that's not gonna stress you out. The idea is that you're gonna approach this drawing with care and a real desire to capture the essence of this flower. Okay, so I'm gonna start my seven minutes. If you are unsure where to begin, if like drawing is quite new to you, you might actually want to start your seven minutes with that blind contour drawing that we just did as our warm-up exercise. So you could decide that just to begin with, just to loosen yourself up, you could start with that blind contour and then start to go back and add in details. However, I am going to just first of all, think about how big I want my drawing to be. So I want to try and get it from the top to the bottom. So the bottom of my vase will be here. And then the top of my vase will be around the middle of the page. And then I will have my flowers coming out above it. So that's, that's the kind of scale I'm going to try and do. So don't worry about pressing too hard. Some people um, tend to press really hard with their pencils. Some people are so faint with their pencils that you can hardly see the marks. With this particular exercise, I would say fainter the better for this time because that Stoddard painting or picture drawing that we're inspired by, he was really sensitive with his mark making. So we want to try and emulate that. So you're totally welcome to lift your pencil off the page as you're doing this drawing. But sometimes I like challenging myself to keep my pencil on the page as much as I can because you get that really fluid line. Now remember, if you make a mistake, you can go and rub it out. But you could decide to just be a bit more relaxed with those little errors and continue on. Okay, so you've had two minutes. You've got five minutes left. So you've got a nice amount of time. Don't feel like you need to rush. If you're drawing a plant, it will be the same thing, same idea, but you'll probably have to, um, you'll find that there are less details on most plants. So I imagine your lines will be much bigger um, and you might have to try and capture more of the plants to get an interesting composition. For example, if you just did one leaf of your plant, you might not be too impressed with your drawing at the end. Maybe you like that, but you might think, oh, it's a little bit dull. Got four minutes. So you've only had three minutes. If you have hardly done anything, I'd suggest you try and pick up your pace a bit. If you feel like you're nearly done, then slow right down and try and get those details in. Okay. Remember, I really want you to think about capturing these as flower portraits. So almost as if I was to come around to your house and to have a look at your drawing, I would be able to say that flower you've drawn is that flower in the bunch. I can tell that that is that flower. That's the kind of thing we're aiming for is that we've got that level of detail and care going into our drawings. Once 
one of the best pieces of advice um, I got given last year on a drawing course I was doing with the Royal Drawing School. It was a little bit brutal, but it was probably the best piece of advice I had. One of the tutors says, <clears throat> I can tell you're getting lazy with your drawing. And it's as if you now are just drawing trees as opposed to trying to draw that specific tree. And she said, it might be that no, nobody else would be able to notice that you're starting to just make really um, easy drawings. But she said, but you will know when you've lost that um, kind of search for essence in a tree. And I found it a, an amazing challenge, quite an inspiring challenge, because it made me realise like, we can become a little bit complacent with drawing and just think, oh, I just need to make it look pretty. It doesn't really matter if it looks like what I'm drawing as long as it looks pretty. But I found that really inspiring to think, can I make the tree I'm drawing or the flower I'm drawing look exactly like that tree? so that no other tree in the whole world looks like the one I've drawn. Okay, two minutes left. Now you're getting to a stage where I want you to think about making it feel complete. So you've still got two minutes. Still got two minutes. I'm gonna try and get my vase in and an indication of the stems in my vase. It is totally okay if your drawing's incomplete at the end of these, um, this minute and 20 seconds, but it's quite a fun challenge to try and get it finished in that time. Okay, one minute left. So awesome that you guys are doing this on Zoom. Such a cool idea, doing it with a friend. Love that. Okay, now you will notice if your flower is in water, there's like a magnifying effect um, on the stem. So it's actually bigger under the water because it's magnified by the water than it is um, above the water. So I'm gonna try and capture that as well because that gives a real sense of the lightness. Okay, 30 seconds left. So just finishing it off so it feels complete now. Remember, you're just doing lines. You're not adding in tone at this point. Just keeping it nice and linear. You're about to work in tone. So if you're itching for shading, it is about to arrive. Okay, five seconds left. And stop. Awesome, okay. I've drawn quite faintly, so it might be hard to see it. But this was my attempt at a drawing in the style of Thomas Stoddard, okay? That's my linear drawing. If you're working with somebody on Zoom, why don't you show them? Show them what you've done. Okay, so we're gonna start working in tone now, but I'm gonna teach you a little technique that actually hopefully, again, will loosen you up how you're thinking about tone and um, be quite an exciting new way to work. So first of all, I'm just gonna get us to actually think about how many tones we can make with our pencil. So beside my line drawing, that you could do it on a scrap piece of paper or somewhere separately, I'm going to draw five boxes, okay? Five little thumbnail boxes. Mine are probably about two centimetres by two centimetres. Like this, okay? And with my pencil, I'm gonna try and create five, um, kind of five different tones. So press with a different weight with your pencil. So what I would do if I were you is with the first box, try and get it as dark as possible. So you're gonna press really hard and you're gonna get it as dark as possible. If you are a pro artist, you draw all the time, this might feel a little bit basic, but I encourage you to do this exercise because it's gonna help you with the next thing, okay? So I've gone really dark for my first bit. I'm gonna go a little bit less dark in my next box. I'm gonna go a little bit less dark again. 
Now remember, you really wanna try and make these tones look different. So you're gonna to have to start to press really lightly to get an even lighter tone, okay? And if you're final box, you might press hardly at all, okay? I've almost just drawn little stripes to try and get that. So you can see that I've got a range of tones going from really dark to quite light. Okay, so I'll just give you a moment to do that whilst I pull up the next artist that we are going to be inspired by today. Okay. So I'll just give you a little bit longer to do those tonal boxes. Hopefully you can now see that you've got a range from dark to light. You're getting more confident with the amount of pressure you apply with your pencil will give a different depth of um, kind of, I feel like I'm not using the right terms, but depth of tone. Okay. Continue going if you're still going on it. Otherwise, have a look here. Okay, this is the next artist that we are gonna actually be inspired by today. This is a Richard, Richard Hamilton drawing. And as you can see, his flowers aren't actually super clear in this drawing. So I'll just hold it up there for you to see. You can see that he's definitely got a floral composition. He's actually got a little roll of Andrex at the front there, I think it is, yeah. He's got a bowl of fruit, you can see the vases, but it's not super clear, okay? So he's used tone and shading to bring this sense of 3D depth, but he hasn't worried too much about outlines or the details of the flowers. So this is what we're gonna base this next exercise on, okay? So what you're gonna do is you're gonna get your pencil and you're gonna put down a ground. Now the idea with the ground is that it's trying to um, it's trying to put down something that you're then working with. Um, so instead of just having a white page, it's almost like putting a background down, but we just call it a ground. So I'm gonna get my pencil, and instead of drawing like this, I'm gonna put it on the side, and I'm going to try and create very quickly a gray background. Now, if I look at my tonal boxes, I want to get a mid tone. So I'm going for that middle tone, as my background, okay? Don't press too hard, because you're otherwise you're not gonna be able to go any darker. So you're doing a mid-tone ground. Now, I do this a lot, so I'm fairly speedy, but try not to be too perfect about this. It doesn't have to be perfect. The idea is that you're giving yourself this mid-tone to work with, okay? mid-tone to work with, go to the edges if you can. If it's taking you ages, just do a small part of your page and you can just work on that to begin with. Can be slightly tiring for the arm, but... There we go, okay. So I've got my mid-tone down and I've got slight patches where it's a bit darker than the rest, but don't worry too much. It doesn't need to be perfect. You just wanna make sure that it's not white anymore, okay? And as you can see from my boxes, I've tried to get it to be a mid-tone ground. I don't want it to be too dark, and I don't want it to be too light, and I will explain why. So I'll give you a moment to do that. Okay. Now, what we're gonna do is we're now gonna put down our pencil and we're gonna pick up our rubber. If your rubber is well worn, you will notice that one side's quite curved probably and one side hopefully will be perfectly flat if you've never used the other side. I tend to jump between the two. But use the end of your rubber that's the sharpest. If it's all quite blunt like this, don't worry. But if you've got a corner of your rubber, awesome, okay? So what you're gonna do is you're gonna look for the highlights in your composition. So in your bunch of flowers, in your plants, and you're not gonna draw any outlines. You're just going to try to start to bring those flowers out of that gray mid-tone by adding in highlights, okay? 
So we're not going to spend ages on this. This is hopefully just going to get us quickly thinking about the differences in tones in lights, mid-tones and dark parts. If you're confused, let me let me just show you. Okay, I'll show you with the Richard Hamilton. If you're confident, get going. Seven minutes have started. So if you see here, the, the lightest parts of his drawing, the flowers, they're just left blank. All you see there is white paper. Okay, so we're going to look at our composition. So parts of my flowers, most of the petals are the lightest part. So I'm going to use my rubber to actually bring those out. So let me show you as I do it. So I'm going to get my rubber and I'm going to start to quite quickly just get a sense of the petals. Now it's probably going to look quite scruffy, quite scrappy. That's okay. The Richard Hamilton um, drawing that we looked at wasn't, wasn't a really neat, tight drawing. It was quite loose in parts. So you can do that too. Okay, so I'm, I'm getting that in. I want to have a few highlights on my vase. Got one side of my vase is a lot lighter than the other. And then the bottom of my vase is really quite light, where the light is catching. So I'm just doing that quickly to show you. Hopefully you're taking a little bit more care than I have done. But you'll see that I've just pulled out those parts on my on my plant or on my flowers or my bouquet, whatever you're using, to, to bring out the lightest parts of my drawing. Okay, I'll explain the next bit if you've been super speedy, but don't worry if you're still doing the highlights. Then I'm gonna get back to my pencil and I'm now gonna start to bring in those really dark tones. So jump from your middle tone to your darkest tone, okay? So to begin with, we're using the lightest, the mid and the darkest, and then we can add in those other tones later. So I'm getting the darkest tones in. So squint your eyes and look at your flower or your vase, whatever. When you squint your eyes, the brighter things become more obvious and the darker things become more obvious and you lose those mid-tones a bit. So when your eyes are squinted, hopefully you will be able to see what the darkest parts of your drawing are. Now with your pencil, you are gonna draw in the darkest parts on your drawing. Remember, try not to do any outlines. It can be challenging to not have a sense of like, oh, I don't even know whereabouts my vase is in my drawing. So if you need them, you can put in, in some outlines to kind of help you as guides. But if you feel like you, you want to give it a go without using outlines, I would challenge you to try that. I think my bracelet's banging a bit, isn't it? Okay. So I can see that the, the tip of the vase, the mouth of the vase, is the darkest part on my drawing. So again, I'm turning my pencil on its side to try and get. And I'm just focusing on the darkest part. So you shouldn't be varying your dark tone. You should just be doing it all as dark as possibly for those darkest parts. In a moment, if you finish doing your darkest parts of your drawing, you could then look to add in mid-tones, okay? But it might be that you're not actually quick enough to add in those mid-tones yet. So just focus on the darkest parts. So just to explain that, if anyone's confused, you can see, it's a little bit hard to see, but you can see this is the top of my vase. I'm doing, one side of my vase had the highlight, one side of my vase has the shadow, and I'm gonna start putting in some dark bits for the stems in between my flowers, because those are the darkest bits I can see. Okay, and this is the last kind of theory exercise we're doing before we go into our final proper drawing. When I say proper, I mean the one that kind of hopefully you will feel the most confident about and you get to apply all these things, different things we've learned today. Okay, if you've sped through and you've got your highlights and your shadows, now pick your mid-tones and try to add those in, okay? 
Now, the challenge with working like this means that you'll probably, um, you'll probably not have got things as accurately. For example, for me, my vase is actually quite lopsided because I, because I didn't do an outline of the vase. It's, um, it's a little bit wonky, but that's okay. I really, I really like that. The looseness and the freedom that comes when you don't worry about outlines. Okay, so I'm just gonna work a little bit longer on my darkest parts. And then I'm gonna start thinking about my mid-tones. Okay, we just have one minute left, so you're probably feeling like I haven't given you nearly long enough, but the idea with this is just introducing this idea of building up tone, drawing out highlights from a darker background. So I'll show you what I've got so far. So you can see I've got the stem in my vase, but I haven't got any mid-tones. So it's just got my light, my lightest parts, my highlight, my background, and my darkest parts. So I'm just gonna add in a little bit of my mid-tone before my chimer goes off. Now I'm imagining your drawing's looking pretty interesting. Hopefully you're actually starting to feel like it's coming up, it's coming off the page. It's almost like it appears out of the darkness. I love this way of working. Okay, 10 seconds more. And then you're gonna stop. Okay, great. So I'm just gonna show you the Richard Hamilton again so you can see. So he has got some mid-tones, but pretty much he's got the dark, the medium background and the light highlights. But there's some parts where he's got a bit more variation of tone, okay. So for our final drawing, we're going to try and incorporate the two. So first of all, we're going to start with a very faint linear drawing. And if you want, you could put your mid-tone mid down first, then add a linear drawing. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to, first of all, I'm going to add my mid-tone background down. I'm just going to do this really quickly so that I can set you guys up here really speedy off. So I'm putting my mid-tone down. Okay, let's just say that it's scrappy, but that'll do. Now I'm going to start to do a detailed light linear drawing on top of that mid-tone, okay? So you're incorporating the two. You're gonna have um, the highlights really jumping out from that dark background, but you're gonna have the detail and the accuracy of your linear drawing. Okay, we are going to take 12 minutes for this. So get going, I'll set that timer off. Now I'm gonna just get my background feeling a little bit more even, because I rushed that a little bit. So I've got my mid-tone background. If you've got any questions, now would be a good time to just type them into the chat so I can answer them if any of that's not clear to you. My mid-tone background. And then I'm going to start to add in my very delicate linear drawing. Now you might find what ha what's happened on my drawing is because I've put my pencil so far on the side, some of the red paint from my pencils come off. So be careful when you're doing the background like that, that you just get the graphite onto your page. But one of the advantages of using graphite and not colour is it's actually easier often with most colored pencils they can stain your paper but with graphite it's much easier to lift off that graphite just to get the pure white background okay so now i'm going to add in my delicate linear drawing if you want to actually start your final drawing by pulling out those highlights again that's great if you want to just focus on one flower that's fine too. You're making choices now about your final, final drawing of today.
Now next week we'll be working with a similar subject matter. We'll be using plants and flowers again, but we, I'm going to teach you some techniques with colour next week. So lots of these classes kind of jump between tonal ones just using graphite to ones using colour. So hopefully it means that you've got a real variety of techniques that you can use in your own time. I'm really hoping that once lockdown ends for good and we can have gatherings again that I'll get to meet lots of you in some real life barely drawing classes. If you live in London and you're able to come it'd be great to meet some of you. Had a few people messaging saying that they were really excited to join one in real life so thanks so much for that enthusiasm that was just super encouraging to hear that you are enjoying these classes a lot and um, yeah I really appreciated that so thank you. Okay, you've got nine minutes-ish left. So we are working really quickly. I, I understand that I'm rushing you guys and making you work quite quickly, but hopefully that means that you stop being too precious about the work and you just work a little bit quicker. Okay, I'm now going to go to my rubber and I'm gonna to start to pick out some of those highlights before I get to my shadow. So I've got my detailed linear drawing. I'm really pulling out the white bits of my flowers now, the highlights. Now, one of the things about not using lines or outlines is you can end up with quite an abstract, um, abstract, drawing at the end, which I think some of you are more abstract artists, so hopefully these exercises give you an opportunity to express yourself in slightly different ways, but still in an abstract way. Now, if you're drawing a vase, a see-through glass vase, you will notice that the highlights can be quite random in terms of you don't necessarily just have light on one side, dark on one side. You'll have these, um, because the light refracts through, you'll get these pockets of um, brighter parts. So try and be really accurate with that. Don't just make it up. Try and really look where the light is falling on your drawing. This afternoon, you've probably seen it on the Instagram, but if you haven't, really excitingly, we've got another kids class today at three o'clock, three till 3.45, slightly shorter session for young ones who might not have the same attention span that we do. Um, that will be suited to young children. The last kids class we had was six to 12 year olds. This is probably a little bit younger, but I would say 12 year olds would still enjoy it, but it's pitched a little bit younger today. That's going to be with my friend Catriona, who runs the Instagram account called Unexpected Artists. So you can have a look over at her account. She's a teacher at a primary school, really gifted at communicating creative um, ideas. So if you know any young people that you think would enjoy it, please do pass it on because I know lots of people are struggling for inspiration and activities in this time. Okay, now what I would encourage you to do, just pause and go back to your boxes where you did your three different tones, now uh, five different tones, sorry. I want you to look at your drawing and think, have I included all those tones? Have I got those really dark darks? Have I got those really light lights? Okay, have I got those mid tones? This drawing should include all five of those tones. You don't just want to do dark, mid and light now, you want to have more variation. 
So it's always good to look back at that, um, those tonal boxes as kind of a reference point just to go, am I using the whole range of tones that I could be using? Now, I'd be really interested if there's anybody that's like longing for a particular theme um, for these classes, please do say, because I know some people, some people messaged me saying they were really longing for portraiture classes, and then other people messaged me being like, I'm not joining in, I don't enjoy portraiture. So it's really fine if you don't enjoy a, a particular topic to not join in, but I would love to know if there's anything you're really craving that I'm not I'm not doing, let me know and I can try and incorporate that into future classes. If there's enough interest, we could even think about um, some colors, uh, some classes using paint. So do let me know if that's something you'd really like. Okay, I'll show you what I've got so far. So I'm not working that quickly, but I've got my, my light tones, my dark tones, and I've got some of my mid tones here. Now, it might be, hopefully your background is not quite as scrappy as mine, but it could be that now I actually could work into my mid-tone to add in the shadows of the vase below. So I'll give you a little example of that. So I've got mid-tone in my background, but I'm now going to add the shadows below my vase to make it even darker. And it'll help it feel like it's actually sitting on a surface instead of floating in mid-air. If you don't add shadows, your object's just kind of float. So see if you can add a shadow to ground it on your table or bench, whatever you're working on. Now again, if you're using a glass vase, you will notice that it's not just a clear cut shadow below, you'll probably have quite a streaky shadow where the light's pouring through. Okay, doing well. We've still got a bit of time left, so don't feel like you need to rush it too much. But you do want to get this feeling complete. Now, what I find is quite helpful at various points is if you're like looking at yours and you're like, oh, this is not working. Just pause, go back to your previous pieces and have a look at what you love and what you don't love. So for example, I really love the delicacy of these lines in my linear drawing. And I think I want more of that delicacy to come through in this drawing. I don't want it to feel as smudgy as this one. But what I like about this one is that I was so bold with my darks. And I don't think I've been as bold with my darks here, okay? So I'm actually just taking a moment to reflect so that I can make my drawing as kind of as good as I can make it for what I'm trying to achieve. Okay, so I want a sense of delicacy. I also really want to have those bold darks in there. I don't want it to just um, kind of merge into the background. I want it to jump off the page a bit. And I will show you one last time the Richard Hamilton, just so you've got a reference again of how he does it. So his shading is much more, um, it's much scruffier, but it's got, it feels like it's almost living, doesn't it? It feels like the wind might be blowing slightly through a conservatory space, whatever it is, you've got a sense of movement because he's, he's been a little less tight and um, controlled. He's got that in the background. Okay. Doing well. So. If you're working with somebody, I would encourage you at this point just to pause and to ask for their input. Is there anything you think they could add to theirs? Is there anything they think you could add to yours? If you're working on your own, just take a moment to reflect. Because we still have seven minutes now. Seven minutes till we finish today. Now, 
Now what you'll notice is probably your hand, the side of your hand where you're leaning on your page is getting quite dirty. So what you can use is a scrap of paper and you can put it down under your hand and lean on that piece of paper. The, um, the oils and sweat on our, on our skin actually causes it to smudge, but if you use some paper, it will prevent it smudging to the same extent. So that's a little top tip if your page is getting a little bit scruffy. Okay, we've got five minutes left. So see if you can challenge yourself for this to feel complete by the end of the five minutes. Even if you want to work into it a little bit beyond the end of the session, I still want you to challenge yourself to just think about it as an overall composition. If you only had five minutes and then it had to be done, what would you need to include or get rid of for it to feel like it was finished? Just make sure that you've got that range of tones again. It's very easy to just stick in the mid tones. Again, shout out to um, my friend who loves to just do light tones. Challenge yourself to go darker. If your drawings always look really pale, go darker. If your drawings always look really dark, try and have a little bit more delicacy in using more light tones. So you can knock your drawing back. What I mean by that is if it gets too dark too much, just use your rubber. Pull out those highlights again, okay? The great thing about drawing is it's, it's always workable. You can always go back into it. It never feels um, like it's set in stone. We have just got four minutes left. Hopefully it's starting to come together now and feel like it's a, a more of a finished piece. In my experience of teaching this technique, lots of people have never used this idea of putting a mid-tone ground on their page. It can be a really exciting technique to learn. So there are kind of two different ways that people oil paint often. They either use a, a light background and build in the shadows, or there's a very popular technique of doing a very, very dark background and you build up layers and layers of highlights with oil paint. So you might, now that you know that, you might actually be able to notice that when you look at paintings. You'll be able to notice which paintings have the highlights been brought out of the darkness and which paintings have shadows been put into the light background. Okay, I'll show you where I've got to. We are almost at the end today. But what I've done in the middle here is I've actually, because the, I wanted my vase to come out a bit more, I've actually rubbed away the background a little bit just around the top of my vase so that it feels like it's coming forward. That actually helps bring my vase forward, okay? And I, uh, the light is actually catching the table behind my vase and that helps by just rubbing out the background there. It help really bring that kind of pop forward with the vase. So you can try that. Don't feel like you can't touch the background just because you put this mid-tone down. OK, 
Okay, we're coming to the end of our time together now. So just see if you can get all the details of your petals on. If there's part of your, of your drawing that you've completely avoided, try and go back into it right now. I would absolutely love it if after this class, if people would send me pictures of their drawings. I enjoy it so much seeing what you all got up to. It's one of the things I miss most about not teaching um, in the flesh is I get to see all the progressions of people's drawings. And it's just so exciting when you see somebody growing confidence with a certain technique. I love it, absolutely love it. It's one of the main reasons I do why I love to teach. Okay, we are nearly done, nearly, nearly done. So I've tried to give you a little bit longer on this final drawing today, because I know that with some of the previous classes, we've rushed it a little bit. So I hope, if you've done lots of my classes, I hope you feel like you've had a little bit longer to really work into this one. finishing off now. Now if it's looking really smudgy because your hand has gone over and over it, now would be a great time to just use your rubber again to bring those highlights back. Okay, and just finishing that off now. Okay, that was my timer going off. But we're not being kicked off Instagram yet. Usually it gives me like, we're about to end. <laughs> Um, so you can just try and get that feeling a little bit neater and I will show you what I've got to end. Okay, so that's kind of where I'm leaving mine. It probably could do with a bit more work, but I'm happy with that. Happy with the detail and the delicacy of my leaves. As you can see, like I told you earlier on, my vase is a little bit wonky, but it's okay. It's okay if there are parts of yours that don't feel quite right. You can either go back with your rubber and try and get it a little bit more um, accurate, or you can leave it just to feel a little bit more expressive. That's the end of our class today, everyone. Thank you so much for joining. If you enjoyed the class, please do consider donating, but there's no pressure to. I know that finances are tight for so many right now, so I do want this to be available as a free class. But if you're happy donating, I'll put information on my story so that you can think about giving. And please do send me photos of your work. I just love seeing your work. Any final questions, feel free to shoot them through. But that is the end of our session today. Thank you so much for joining. And so good to see so many of you involved and a few new faces too. Awesome. Oh, I love it. Love seeing all of you involved. So brilliant. Oh, so glad that you love that technique, Amory. One that you can try with your students, hopefully. You're so welcome. Thank you for joining everyone. So much fun. I think some of you joined on and you had a bit of a bridal Zoom. So if that was you, I hope that was really fun. Thanks, Max. Thanks, Ames. Yay, so glad you could all join, so awesome. You're welcome, Lucy, you're welcome, Charlotte. Oh, I know, you signed on again. So good to see you. Awesome. Oh, Tatiana, so glad you joined on too. Please send me photos of your drawing, I'd love to see them. Okay, Brill, I'll sign off here, but thank you so much for joining, guys, and hopefully see you next week. Have a wonderful weekend, enjoy the sun, and see you next week, hopefully. Bye.